So you're looking to hire a building contractor uh, and you're looking maybe for a, a general contractor or a specific contractor or you want to, you, maybe you're doing a room addition, maybe you're doing a new home, maybe you're just doing a deck, but you're getting ready to have a big whole world change with this, have, bringing people into your home and doing a project that probably is going to cost a lot of money. And that's what this course is all about, to help teach you what you should be looking for when you're hiring a general contractor or a building contractor of any sort. That way you can make sure that you're not getting ripped off. You're getting what you pay for and the job's being done right. I have been a builder now for uh, 46, 47 years. So by, by the time you get this book or you get this series out there, it'll probably be 47, 48 years. I also am a building engineer. I am also have been doing a master, I have a master carpenter card. Uh, I've been, I built subdivisions, I built strip malls, I built custom homes, uh, track homes. And how I've learned all of this that I'm getting ready to share with you is actually trial and error because there really isn't anybody out there that teaches you how to, well, either how to be a general contractor or how to be a, how to hire a contractor. So first thing, we want to put this whole thing together. It's like a roadmap. Each and every process is making sure that everything is done to a certain expectation and there is no surprises. And what I'd like to do is let's talk about the very beginning of the project. How are we going to pay for this project? Now, there's several different ways and I want to talk a little bit about each and every one of them as we go through, but how are we going to pay for it? Well, you, you, we, you know, naturally we could always just use our hard earned money that we've saved and saved and saved and put it into account. And, you know, uh, which is, you know, it's a fabulous way of doing it. You know, you know, and nobody really likes debt, but that hurts if you lose all that money too, but it also hurts if you borrowed all this money and you lose it. So, well, so we want to make sure that we don't overspend uh, what we're doing and we want to make sure we have a system of how we're going to pay for it. So either we pay for it by cash. We can also, is a, a way a lot of folks do, especially if the bigger the project, especially the bigger the project, say like a room addition or a kitchen remodel, a uh, big kitchen remodel or, or a brand new home, then, then you're going to have to go to some alternative financing sources, such as like go to your bank uh, and get a builder's loan for doing this. Or a, sometimes you can also just get a, a personal loan. Uh, there's all kinds of home mortgages. Get a second on your home. You know, talk with you. I highly recommend that however you do this, you contact your accountant or you think about what's going to best for benefit you and your family. So banking is a great place to go to for your loans for that. Another way you can also borrow money for this, and I, hey, I've even done it this way. I borrowed against uh, my 401k. And of course, you've got to put the money back. But if it's something that you're investing in and you know once it's done, then you can you know, say, for instance, okay, I put, I borrowed, I take this money out of my 401k uh, and uh, then our, my pension fund. But I know I got to pay it but back in, right? Which that's the whole idea. But I can take this and borrow this money temporarily, fix my home up as a bit on a big ticket item, and then I can go back to my bank and may, and possibly refi my home and get it at a lower interest rate, and also because now your home is worth more money. So that's a fabulous way. And that way, you could when you reborrow, take your money back from your uh, loan, then you could pay back your four hundred one k. That's a great way of doing it. 401k is a way. Another way of doing it is there's life insurance policies out there that you can borrow from that. Now, I've done that whenever, actually, whenever I've bought houses to, you know, to and flip. That's a great way of doing it, too. So because then I turn around and refinance it at the end. But then I so you just take your life insurance policy out. Uh, money that you could borrow against. Now, no, you have to double check and see which ones you can and can't do that. But if you have one, that's an opportunity for you to do that too. So think about that. Another great way, and this is what I was taught years ago, and that was credit cards. So you have a lot of folks, if you don't have a lot of credit card debt already, 
and you're just going to temporarily borrow this money until you uh, d d refinance it or sell it or whatever the pro whatever you can see you get your money back as long as you got an implant of this don't put your all this on a credit card if you don't have a way of paying it back uh, quickly but that's a fabulous way to do it so maybe the bank says well your house isn't worth this much money for me to refi at this moment uh, but then after you, you you fix it up then bang you got it that's a great way of doing it. I've done that countless times myself. So these are all different ways that we can pay for our house, our project. But it's important that we know how we're going to pay for the project because it happens all the time. We get involved. We get in, in the middle of it. But we get all emotional in this. And all of a sudden, now we want this and we want that and we start putting change orders. But then the next thing you know, our budget's blown. And we don't have any way of paying for it. You know, we haven't anticipated. So that is where we head to the next step, planning on what the project looks like. Now, this actually, for me, is probably the most fun because this, but it's also extremely important. What I want to talk about that. So what does that mean? I want to know. So I know, okay, I, I, I want a deck. Well, you know, what, I, what am I going to do? Just a deck's a deck's a deck, right? Well, no, not really. You know, because what are you going to do with your deck? Ah, what am I going to be doing with my kitchen? What am I going to be doing in my room addition? Or whatever, my basement refinish. How am I going to live in it? Once you start thinking, okay, so we're going to step onto the deck. You know, some of this, like a kitchen, it was a little easier to think about how you're going to live in it, live, use it. But a deck, well, I'm going to barbecue on it, right? Maybe, you know, I'm going to entertain on it. Absolutely. Maybe I'm going to have, uh, which I've done, built decks for people where they put their grandkids out there. They babysit and they like a nice place, uh, safe area, kind of like a big, beautiful, glorified crib. How are you going to live in it? And how are you going to use it? And that'll help you start guiding you in what you're going, what it's going to look like. Other things. So, okay, paint. You know, you got so many colors you got to choose from. Pick your colors now. Pick the colors of your brick. Pick the colors of the stain of your step of your decking material. Get this the brick that work that you're going to do. The roofing materials. Get all of your colors, put it together, think about it. Do not get in a hurry. Take your time and actually add. This is the time that we add every tiny little dream wish. Right now, it doesn't cost us anything to dream. Dream big, put everything that you want into it. You know, I, so, uh, every huge thing that you want. And this is the time that we need to do that. Then we start putting our colors or putting it, everything together, you know, like your carpeting, you want all this done, uh, you know, bathroom, you know, how am I going to use my bathroom? How am I going to do, you know, uh, do I want a vanity? Do I got two people? Is this a, a, going to be using this vanity? Is it a Jack and Jill bath? You know, just how are we going to live in it? Why is that so important? Well, we don't want change orders. I say, I want this type of carpeting. At least I think I do. But if you don't know, and then all of a sudden, well, maybe I want this carpeting. Well, it's another $5 a square yard more. Well, I only budgeted for $25 a square yard or $35 a square yard, but now this is going to cost me $40, $45 a square yard. Well, maybe I decided I just, I don't want carpeting. Now I want hardwoods. Well, then bang, you know, it just jumps up. So this is the time that we put all of this together. So these are some fabulous tips that you need to kind of follow. Like I say, hit like and subscribe, follow us, go check out the rest of the videos because we're going to be doing a whole series of these there and uh, that you could help you. And then at the end, you know, we're going to also share with you uh, how you can actually buy the book. And if you come and you tell us that you bought the book and you went through, watch these videos, you're going to get a special discount on top of the regular cost of the book. But folks, it's going to save you so much money. This is a book that you literally can't do without. You can't do without because unless you're, even if you're experienced in contractors, I want you to read it too. Because if you show your people that you know how to do this to this and, and you know these things and you're prepared and you help guide your customers, who's going to be the contracting expert? Joe Blow and the pickup truck with the tail light warranty? 
or the man who's there to actually help his customers, his clients.